Hello, Stats class. This is a question from your 3.3 homework. This is finding the standard deviation from a frequency distribution where you have classes here on the distribution. So we're going to use this formula. I'm going to show you how this formula is going to be used. So first of all, let's open it up in StatCrunch. Um, I've got a video out that already shows how to do this in Excel. I'll post this as well, the Excel one as well, in addition to this one. All right, so here's our uh, table, intervals and frequencies. What we need is to make every single thing that's in this table. So we need n, which is the sum of the frequencies. We need x, which is the midpoints of the intervals. We need um, f times x. We need x squared, which is the midpoint squared, and then f times those midpoints squared. We need these sums, the square of the sum. Anyway, we're going to eventually build our way to the numerator and denominator. And then the very last thing we're going to do with this table is the square root of numerator divided by denominator. We're actually just going to give it a name. So let's go through and compute everything that we need. So the first thing we need is um, the midpoints. I'm going to go ahead and compute the midpoints. So the midpoints are the uh, halfway points on these intervals. So you can just use a basic calculator for this. Halfway between 30 and 39 is the average of the two. So 34 and a half. And then the same thing here, halfway between these two. But it's just, these are 10 bigger than these. Like every time you go down, you get 10 bigger. Every time you go down, you get 10 bigger. Same thing's going to happen for the midpoint. So every time you go down, you're just going to add 10. So it's just that first number is going to change to the next number. So 74 and a half, 84 and a half, 94 and a half. Okay, and you can, you can compute it if you need to, but with the data set that we're given, it's just always going to be add 10. All right, so this is our value for x. So I'm going to just call this x. All right, now we need uh, x squared. So over here, beside that, I'm going to click in this box. I'm going to go up to data, and I'm going to come to compute expression, and then I'm going to click build. So build it brings up this calculator with these columns available to us and all these different functions we can do. I'm just going to click x, double click it, and then this is the power of so x squared. OK, I'm going to give it the label x squared, so x shift 6 squared. And notice it squares all the values for x. So these are the midpoints, and these are the square of the values of the midpoints. All right, now we need to multiply f times x squared and f times x for these formulas. So in variable 5 column, I'm going to hit data again, compute, expression, and I'm going to multiply f times x. So I'm going to click build, and then, oops, I need to delete that. I always start off with a blank expression. Uh, f times x squared, f times x, that's frequency times x. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. So, oops, and then get my x, frequency times x, double click it. All right, frequency times x, I'm going to just call that f times x. Okay, so there's the f times x column. What it's doing, it's multiplying 1 times 34 and a half. 1 times 44 and a half. 4 times 54 and a half. 2 times 64 and a half. 12 times 7. Anyway, it's just multiplying this column times this column. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Compute expression. I'm going to multiply now f times x squared. So frequency times x squared. And make sure it's in the little quote bars there. Hit OK, and then let's label that f times x squared. All right, and there's f times x squared. Right, it's putting all those values in there. It's computing all that stuff for me. All right, and then we need n. n is the sum of the f column. It says right here um, n represents the total number of sample values, so that'll be the sum of the frequencies. So over here, I'm just going to type in data. Uh, compute, expression, build, and this time we need to find in the functions column, we need to find sum. So I come over here until I find sum, there it is, double click that, and then it's saying, alright, the sum of what, which column do you want to sum up? So I'm going to sum up the frequencies to get in. So sum of frequencies, okay, and then label that in, compute. Alright, so there's in. Now I'm ready to compute the numerator. Okay. 
I need the sums again, but I need sum of f times x squared. Well, I've already got that right here. I need sum of f times x. I've got that right here. I've got n, so I need, I've got everything I need to do to make the numerator. So I'm going to come over here to bar 8. Compute expression. Build. All right, I want n. Right, this is times when it's right up against the parentheses. So n times. Oops, I need n. All right, and then the sum of, so I'm going to go down here and find sum again. Sum of f times x squared. So that's right here, f times x squared. Okay, so n times the sum of f times x squared. We're going underneath the radical now. So that's that minus, minus the sum of f times x. So the sum of f times x. Right, and then that gets squared. So you need to make sure you come out of this box. Make sure this little red part comes out. And then you do square. Okay, so that's the numerator underneath that radical. So I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to label that numerator. And hit Compute. So there's the numerator. And then we're going to come over a little bit more to var 9. We're going to do the same thing for denominator. It's a lot easier. So data, Compute, Expression. The denominator is n times n minus 1. So we're going to type build n times, and then we need parentheses, n minus 1. All right, and then I'm going to hit OK, and I'm just going to call this the denominator. All right, n times n minus 1 is the denominator. So the denominator, compute. So there's that guy. And then finally, the last thing. We're going to take the square root of numerator divided by denominator. So data, compute, expression, build. Once again, on the very uh, near the bottom of the functions is square root. It's SQ. Where is it? I just saw it. There it is. SQRT is square root. So square root, and it says square root of what? Numerator divided by denominator. All right, and then you hit OK. And then this, oops, I didn't give it a label. This is S. So that is S. You could have labeled it S when we're in there. But square root of numerator divided by the denominator equals S. So I'm just calling that S. So there's our answer, 11.9. All right, and then it asks, 20% difference between this and the actual 11.1 .1 is considered significant. Is this significant? So the way we determine if it's significant is just to subtract those two. 11.9, oops, subtract, not divide. 11.9 minus 11.1. .1. All right, point, point 0.8, and then divide by the actual number, 11.1. .1. And then multiply that by 100 to get a percent. That's a decimal now. So there it is in percent form. 7.2% is less than 20%, so this is not significantly different. All right, so that's how you do that one with uh, Stack Crunch. It's still, you know, it's a longer process, but it's um, now doable. You know, it's it's easier to do it uh, in Stack Crunch than it would be to compute it out by hand and do it all uh, on your own.